Aleluya. Aleluya, aleluya, aleluya. Aleluya. We are going to pray before you sit. Amen. And I want you to be angry in your spirit tonight because in the name of Jesus things must change. In the name of Jesus tears must stop. In the name of Jesus retrogression comes to an end. Please keep standing. I'm standing on the existing protocol. I want to maintain this atmosphere. Second Kings chapter 8. Second Kings chapter 8. We're going to pray and then we'll be seated. Second Kings media, please help us. Verse 1. Do I have it projected here? Thank you. It says, Then speak Elisha unto the woman whose son he had restored to life, saying, Arise, go thou and thine household, and sojourn wherever thou can sojourn for the lord had called a famine and it shall come upon the land seven years we're reading to verse six very quickly number two and the woman arose and did after the sayings of the man of god and she went with her household and sojourned in the land of the philistines seven years verse three and it came to pass at the seven years end that the woman returned out of the land of the philistines and she went forth to cry unto the king for her house and her land for and the king talked with gehazi the servant of the man of god saying tell me i pray thee all the great things that elisha had done and it came to pass as he was telling the king how he had restored the dead body to life that behold the woman whose son he had restored to life cried to the king for her house and for her land. And Gehazi said, My lord the king, this is the woman and this is her son, whom Elisha... Are you ready to prophesy now? Verse 7. And when the king asked the woman, she told him, So the king appointed unto her a certain officer, saying, Restore all that was hers and all the fruit of the field since the day that she left the land, even until now. Are you ready to pray? You are going to shout the word restore seven times as a prophetic declaration. I want you to be very serious. At the seventh time, you will raise a voice of prayer. Father, restore everything doesn't matter how long are you ready now number one number two number three number four number five number six number seven say after me father in the name of Jesus let there be restoration in my life Open your mouth and pray. Restoration. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Even from tonight. I decree restore. Everything. Restore. Years. Restore. Time. Restore. Peace. Restore. Joy. Restore. Decree and declare outside. Make sure you are praying. Restore. Restore. Shabraka teparato koto preska tebeleke paratos. Lebrika periko taska ligre teke pereka taparusiata. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. So the widow stood before the king and advocated her restoration. There was another widow in Luke chapter 18 and verse 1. The Bible says she went to a judge who did not fear God nor regarded man. And she said, avenge me. Avenge me my adversary. And the Bible says she continued, she persisted. And the man said, even though I do not fear God 
and I do not regard men. Yet this woman wearies me by her continual coming. The Bible says, give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem as a praise. Are you ready to pray one more time? Say, Father, I decree that I will receive total restoration. Open your mouth and pray. Total in your health your finances, your marriage, total restoration. Total restoration. Total restoration. Total restoration. Rate palantas kaprekata pereka paratosiata. You are praying total restoration. I insist. I place a demand upon your integrity tonight. Total restoration. You are a rewarder of them that diligently seek you. Rakata pranta kaparekotos katapranta kaparatos. Elohim, Ruach Elohim, Ruach Elohim, Ruach Elohim, Ruach Elohim, Ruach Elohim. fire is coming from heaven upon you right now i want ushers to quickly bring the people out at the count of three this is for you and your family he said for the promise is unto you and to your children and to your children's children father i pray that in the name of jesus every force responsible for delay retrogression keeping your people down at the shout of that name let fire fall from heaven are you ready now at the count of three, shout Jesus. One, two, three, shout Jesus. I curse every spirit. I curse every operation of darkness. Bring them out. I curse every yoke in the name of Jesus. Tonight in this prophetic service, I release you from every bondage. I release you from every bondage I release you from every bondage by the power that raised Christ from the dead I release you from every bondage in the name of Jesus hallelujah when Lazarus in John chapter 11 the Bible says Jesus came to the grave and he wept and they said, oh, how that he loved him. And he spoke to Lazarus. He that was not just bound, but dead. He said, Lazarus, come forth. Are you ready to speak? The Bible says, even God who quickened the dead and called the things that be not as though they were. 
I want to call forth something that is dead in your life and the power of God will rest upon you as I speak in the name of Jesus everyone who is dead spiritually dead financially dead across every area of your life you are still going to shout that name Jesus again and the power of God will rest upon you I want you to bring them out father I pray that everything that looks like death in the life of your people let it give way now are you ready one two three shout Jesus let death go let death go let death give way over your life let death give way over your family inside outside let the power of God rest upon you I cost that spirit now I cost that spirit now I cost that spirit now bring them out hallelujah one more prayer this one I'm going to sing it for you but thou O oh Lord are a shield for me my glory you lift my This is a prayer now. My glory, you need to love my four horns these are the horns that have lifted up themselves against jerusalem against judah so that no man doth lift up his head he said boy i have sent four carpenters i pray for you like lazarus even though he was out from the dead he could not release to manifest and jesus said lose him and let him go is someone ready to be loose now say father i declare every chain over my life over my destiny by the blood of the lamb let it go now let it go now let it break now open your mouth and pray let it break now lose him and let him go lose his destiny lose her destiny let her go let him go let him go let her go Lose him and let him go. Lose her and let her go. Oh my glory, the lifter up of my head. Oh my glory, the lifter up of my head. My glory. name in Acts chapter 12 the Bible says that when Paul was bound or Peter was bound the chains were not in every part of his body the chains were at his feet and his hands they bound his feet and his hand your hand is responsible for productivity your feet is responsible for motion and advancement and the Bible said they didn't need to bind every part of him they just bound his hand and his feet. When they caught Samson, they also bound his hand. They only left his feet so he could move. In the name of Jesus, every chain holding to your hands, stopping you from being productive, holding to your feet, that January till December, you are still in the same position. 2020, same position. 2021, same position. 
you're going to shout Jesus right now one more time and fire will fall from heaven and release you to go forward are you ready now bound by witchcraft bound by curses and yokes in Christ liberty is your portion our assignment is to enforce it by faith are you ready now one two three shout Jesus Jesus in the name of Jesus now hear me the Bible says now the Lord is that spirit there are many spirits in operation but every time you see liberty it is sponsored by that spirit the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is the Bible says there is liberty 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 in the name of Jesus Christ liberty we're still going to be seated shortly but I'm just seeing a vision and I'm seeing fire and I'm seeing it rest. This one is not deliverance fire. We'll come to that. This is not fire for deliverance. The Lord is speaking to me and saying, some of you have been ordained to be saviors that will bring restoration to your families. Not everyone, but some of you. There is a mantle. There is an ordination. I don't know where that gentleman is or that lady is, but I stretch my hands. Anyone here who has that ordination like Jeremiah, may that fire rest upon your head now. Oh, receive it. Taparika Toskiata. Let it rest upon your head now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. That you will not only be delivered, you will be the deliverer. You will not only be rest the restorer or restored, but you will be the one bringing restoration. In the name of Jesus Christ. one of you in front here I decree and declare that every force that has sat on your destiny now that the anointing has come to bail you out I declare you are liberated forever liberated forever I'm hearing in my spirit something I've not heard before the covenant of shame I don't know what that means the covenant of shame I only know covenant of great things I don't know anything like the covenant of shame but I don't know what family that is. It may be this is a description of a family. From first to last, everyone bowed. From father to mother, everyone stagnated. In the name of Jesus. Any family under the sound of my voice that has gone through plagues of shame, right now I decree and declare, be released now. Be released now. Be released now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Shame and reproach lives your life forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. I stretch my hands upon all who are here in front. There's a reason why we ask that they bring them in front. I declare that everything that has left you that is not of God will never return to you. And let the testimonies that help that lady, let the testimonies that follow this deliverance be permanent in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please return back to your seats. Now we can greet ourselves. Good evening, everybody. Pastor, the Lord bless you. The Lord honor you. I honor every man of God, every woman of God, great servants of God in this place. I honor our father and our mother. The Lord bless you, daddy. The Lord bless you, mommy. Please be seated in the name of Jesus. Tonight, God is insisting that that word restore will no longer be the caption of a program, but that it will be an expression of what God would have done in your life at the end of this service. 
Tonight is not the night to be careless with your discernment. Participate maximally. Amen means I believe. Amen means let it be so in my life. It says, blessed is she that believes. For unto her there shall be a performance. Not unto everybody. Unto her that believes. There shall be a performance of those things that were spoken of by the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Tonight is a miracle service. I will just give a charge and we will pray. I truly came with a determination in my heart to see someone walk out of this place with a real testimony in the name of jesus christ that you will not need to tell people you came for a conference like this your life will be the message and it will sound it loud and clear that god is still mighty in the midst of his people you believe that say amen shout a louder amen, amen. hallelujah God is restorer. He does restore. The Bible is full of instances where restoration came to people at the instance of his word. And very quickly, I want to share with you what I call the forces of restoration. The forces of restoration. And for sake of time, because this is a charge, I will list five of them. I may not do justice in giving elaborate explanations, but it's important for you to know. Remember I told you in Luke 15, Jesus was giving a parable and he said about a woman who had 10 silver coins and she lost one. The first way out for her was that she lit a candle and brought a broom and began to sweep through the room until she found one. So when you want to engage in the business of restoration, you cannot do that in darkness. Are we together? Restoration answers to light. Restoration answers primarily to the presence of light. For as long as you are in darkness, even though what you are looking for is around you, are we together? You will weary yourself there. I'm reminded of a scripture. Remember, when the angels came to rescue Lot and his daughters, those crazy people in Sodom wanted to have their way with the angels. And Lot was grieved and he said, take my daughters, but don't bring this shame upon the angels. They insisted, they said, we don't want your daughters, we want the angels. The Bible says the angels pushed the children inside and struck the people with blindness. The moment they were blind, the Bible says they wearied themselves in front of the door. The door was there that would lead them in, but because there was no light, they wearied themselves in front of the door. No matter how close your door is, if you are bankrupt of light, you will only weary yourself. Remember, in the parable, the treasure that was lost was in the room. But she could not find it until she lit her candle. So in a few minutes, the Lord is going to be lighting your candle. So that with it, you will find the various things that have been missing in your life. For some of you, you will be surprised when this candle is lit that what you are looking for is just beside you. It's always been beside you, but in the presence of darkness, you cannot see. I hope you know that sight is not just possible because you have an eye. You can have an eye. There are many people who have eyes but cannot see. It is the union of a seeing eye and light that brings sight. If we off the light in this place now, Nothing is wrong with your eyes, but you may not see anything again. Light. Everybody say light. There are forces that control restoration. And it's important for us to know that restoration is engineered. Restoration is engaged. It is provoked by engaging certain spiritual laws. And I will list five of them very, very quickly. Number one. The first force that controls restoration, that when a man has lost things, when a man has lost time, when a man has lost relationships, opportunity, finances, even your relationship, your fire, your zeal, like we considered yesterday, every time there are losses in your life, and um, I want you, if you can, you can find, I've done several variations of teachings on restoration, and I'm not going to repeat myself on some of them here but i have taught in one of the series why people lose things 
I wish I had the time to do justice on that because it's important to, for you to know why losses happen in the first place. There are a number of reasons why losses happen in the life of any man, including a believer. Among them, number one, we have carelessness. Carelessness is the reason why losses happen. Number two, lack of discernment. Are we together? When you are careless with your life, the Bible says, um, how does he put it now? He says, um, let us give all diligence to make our, our calling and election sure. And he says, do not let it slip. There's a scripture like that in my spirit that the Lord is bringing. But it's important for us to know that carelessness will always lead to losses and depletion. Number two, lack of discernment. How shall we escape? That's the scripture. If we neglect so great a salvation. If you neglect so great a salvation. Hallelujah. Another reason why people lose is as a result of demonic forces. Demonic forces. Ignorance can also lead to losses. Ignorance can lead to losses. There are many reasons, at least six of them. But now I want to show you how we command and enforce restoration. Number one, the first force is called the force of prayer. When you realize that you have lost things, you've lost opportunity, the first part of call is to pray. And there are various kinds of prayer. Not every kind of prayer commands restoration. There is a kind of prayer that commands restoration. Three people in the Bible prayed that kind of prayer. And I hope that we have a, a time um, to discuss further. But tonight, for tonight, I will just give you in summary. Number one was Elijah. James chapter 5, please. We read from verse 16 to 18. In this case, it was Elijah that made a prophetic declaration. Are we together? A declaration and he said verse 17 and 18 gives us perspective on what happened he says Elijah was a man of like passion like us and he prayed earnestly that there might be no rain and then the Bible says and it rained not on the earth for a space of three years and six months and when he desired that restoration would happen the Bible said he prayed again he prayed again he prayed again. Isn't it amazing that the Bible does not tell us the number of time or the frequency of the fervency of the prayer for rain to be withheld. But when it had to do with returning it back, the Bible says he prayed. He prayed. Are we together? He prayed seven times, repeating the same manner again. There is a kind of prayer that provokes your heavens and causes restoration even rain to come to you. Elijah was that one person. He prayed. You would think because he participated in the drought happening, he would just make a prophetic declaration. It was beyond a prophetic declaration. Elijah did not need to pray and pray for fire to come. He made one declaration and fire came according to scripture. But when it had to do with rain that will restore everything, vegetation, the Bible says he prayed and prayed again. Number two, there was a man in the Bible called Hezekiah. Chapter 38 of Isaiah and verse 1. Hezekiah. we we'll read from verse 1 to 5 if media will help us do that first. The Bible says in those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. Are we learning tonight? And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came to him and said, Thus saith the Lord, set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Verse 2. The Bible says, Then Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and, talk to me, and it was not just lamentation, it was prayer. What was the content of his prayer? Verse 3. He said, remember now, O God, I beseech thee, how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart, and have done that which is good in your sight, and Hezekiah wept so. The answer, the word of the Lord came to Isaiah saying, go and say to Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer and I have seen your tears. Behold, I will add unto thy days 15 years, 6, and I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Syria, Assyria, and I will defend this city. 
even when a word came supposedly from the Lord the Bible says Hezekiah respecting the prophet he turned his face and he prayed are you ready for number three the Bible talks about a mysterious man in the Bible called Job Job was one man who the Bible shows us the beginning of his life and then it shows us the journey that this man was the greatest man in the East by any definition the Bible says he feared God, he eschewed evil, he had sons, he had daughters, he had possessions. And in one day, one day, this man lost everything back to back. And there was one person left in every one of those incidences to return back with a sad news. I pray for you. Anything that will program men to keep bringing bad news every day. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare your ears will not be hearing bad news. For the remaining part of this year, if you must hear any news, it will be the goodness of God in your life. The Bible says while another was speaking, another one would come and say this is not all. It's worse than you are hearing. Another incident. Lost his cattle, lost his estate, lost his sons and daughters in one day. The Bible says he bowed himself to the ashes. Lost hope about life. But the one thing he did not do was to lose his conscience and his integrity towards God. The Bible does not give us elaborate details as to the kind of prayer he prayed. But when you get to Job chapter 42 and verse 10, even though this prayer was intercessory in nature, it was still prayer. The Bible says, and the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed. When he prayed, not before he prayed, not during the prayer. When he prayed, this time around, for his friends. And then the Bible says the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. How did the miracle happen? Next verse. The Bible says, then came unto him all his brethren. Can you imagine that that guy still had brethren alive? And yet they did not come to him. It was only Elihu and two other people who came as recorded in scripture but this guy had brethren he had sisters he had family members those who were his acquaintances before you see that people don't just come because you are in trouble they are sent by the mercy of God to you all of these people did not die they were there when the man was alone with his wife but when he prayed perhaps if he had prayed earlier that situation would not prolong to that extent prayer is powerful it works wonders the Bible says they did eat bread with him in his house and they bemoaned him and comforted him over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. And then the Bible says every man, how many? Every man also gave him a piece of money and everyone gave him an earring of gold. God restored Job when he prayed. When men pray, restoration prayer. God restores them sincerely. He does. Let me show you the kind of prayer that brings restoration. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 19. The prayer that is full of self-righteousness, the prayer that is full of yourself does not provoke heaven and it does not lead to restoration because in most cases, the fact that you need restoration meant that there was once an exceeding great army and something began to happen and deplete your life and deplete everything are we together when you receive something from the first time you don't call it restoration you can call it breakthrough or advancement or progress the idea of restoration meant that you were once in a state and something happened usually you must have participated in a way either with a wrong mindset a depleted spiritual life or any of the factors that I led that I told you earlier on that leads to losses it doesn't matter how it came I'm praying tonight that my God will restore shout a believing amen. amen read verse 19 with me please as loud as you can are you ready one to go for the people shall dwell in Zion at Jerusalem uh-huh thou shall weep no more he shall be very gracious unto thee at the voice of thy cry when he shall hear it when will he answer you not when you are in trouble he does not answer when you are in trouble he answers when he hears the cry he says the Lord hear thee in the day of trouble is that in your Bible the God of Jacob defend you in honor to your cry and your prayer send you help 
from a sanctuary and to comfort you from out of Zion. Many believers, when they are in trouble, what they do in the place of prayer is to lament and get angry and stand in self-righteousness. No, when you are in trouble, you cry. An example of one person who cried that kind of cry was blind Bartimeo. Thou son of David, have mercy upon me. Blind Bartimeo did not say, you know, I'm a sincere person. I don't know why I got into this case of blindness. No, no, no. That's not how it works. There are some of you who need to go to God and cry the kind of cry. Give us that scripture again. Isaiah 30 and verse 19. Very powerful scripture. I found this scripture years ago at a time of retreat. It came by revelation. It says, when he shall hear it, he will answer you when he hears the day you go to him and say lord change the face of my ministry restore take away shame and reproach let it not be that you brought me out of egypt and could not take me into the promised land the bible says present your cause say the lord bring forth your strong reason is someone learning for as long as you keep celebrating lamentations or lamentations and whipping up sympathy over your situation, I hate to be a bearer of bad news. Things will not change. By now you know that time does not change anything. Even if you don't know what to do, start by praying. Lord, show me mercy. I'm clueless about the next season of my life. I don't know what to do. That this was a family with grace and honor. I used to be a businessman transacting at the millions and billions. And something happened and I began to deplete. Show me mercy. Let me tell you one prayer I know God does not reject. One prayer that does not require skill to pray is the cry of mercy. Are we together? Thou son of David, I don't know who you are called. I don't know much about you, but I'm in trouble. The only thing I know is that you are a son of David. And when Jesus heard that, he remembered. He said, no, I can't leave this man this way. Thou son of David. Some of you need to return after this meeting and cry. Lord, let this shame and reproach over my life. This shame and reproach over my family. Let it be rolled away like a curtain. Let it leave my life like smoke before the wind. I am tired of this embargo of reproach that is upon my life and upon my ministry. Someone shout, mercy, Lord. Say it with understanding. Say, mercy, Lord. God shows men mercy. Oh. He does. He does. It's one of the ways that God helps men. I think I've taught it here in this church that there are three ways we access help from God. Number one is the ministry of mercy. Number two is the gift of men. Number three, the ministry of the helper himself, the Holy Spirit. All through scripture, every time God helps a man, this is how he helps a man, by showing him mercy, by bringing men as instruments of mercy and by enjoying the ministry of the helper and the comforter himself and when God wants to give you accelerated help he combines all three you enjoy mercy you enjoy the gift of men and the comfort of the spirit I'm praying for someone in the name of Jesus I don't care what is responsible for the losses the depletion I don't care what is responsible for the stagnancy you have come for this meeting you've come for this miracle service tonight I stand in faith with every vessel of grace in this place and I decree and declare may the Lord hear your cry may the Lord hear your cry hallelujah the Bible speaks to us about a priest. In fact, he was a high priest in the Bible called Zechariah. He was a righteous man who loved the Lord and had a wife called Elizabeth. We do not know when they got married and how long, but we knew that there was a point in their life where they were trusting God for a miracle. It was like an embargo, a reproach upon them. Only God knows. The Bible says one time while Zechariah was performing his high priestly duty, it was in the place of prayer. Listen, I hope you know that Gabriel did not just come at any time in his life. There was a specific time that he came. It was at the time of prayer. Gabriel appears to him and says, good news is coming. And he began to doubt. And Gabriel said, I am Gabriel that standeth in the presence of God. 
his mouth was shut because of unbelief until he agreed with prophecy that the name of that son would be John and John came in the spirit and the power of Elijah six months ahead of Jesus and he was at the wilderness eating locusts and wild honey he became according to scripture the mightiest and the greatest of all the prophets how about another woman who had waited and trust God going to Shiloh and crying all the time called Hannah she prayed a prayer of mercy the answer came at the point of prayer is someone learning now if she sat down at home and said I know one day go better she would have died barren she went in the morning and went to the temple the bible says she lifted up her soul and sobbed and cried to a point that um eli thought that the woman was drunk and he began to rebuke her carry your drunkenness and you want to desecrate god's altar and leave and she said my lord i'm not weeping I'm not a woman who is drunk. It is an expression of my sorrow. There are times when life overwhelms you. You do not have the creativity to be skillful in the place of prayer. The only thing you can say is mercy. Even Jesus in Gethsemane, the Bible says he prayed saying the same thing. We don't know that thing he said. We only know that the Bible says he said, if it be thy will, take this cup off me. But that could not have been the only thing he said he was crying but he also obtained grace to finish in the name of Jesus I pray for someone whatever has attacked your prayer life so that when you need it as a weapon a bailout system from calamity the energy there is not there I'm praying for you the Bible says quicken us and we will call upon your name let the quickening of the spirit rest upon your prayer life in the name of Jesus Christ the Bible says the fire that is upon your altar it shall be it shall burn day and night that you add wood to it every morning it shall not go down an attack on your prayer life is a real attack it is better for your finances to be attacked than your prayer life because when you lose your spiritual fervency don't forget Isaiah 30 and verse 19 when he hears the cry then he will answer let me tell you this God is touched with the feelings of your infirmity, but he's only moved by his word. He sympathizes. We do not have a high priest who has not been touched with the feelings of our infirmity. Are we together now? He's touched, but he only responds to you according to his word. Is someone learning the force of prayer? Number two, very quickly. What is the second key? That controls restoration the second force is called the force of divine direction now you listen to this one divine direction whatever you have to do in your life from tonight labor to secure the voice of God labor to secure the voice of God as far as your life your destiny and the next season is concerned let me tell you something about the deception of success and this does not just apply to restoration alone when you hear the voice of God for a season it's like your life is running on autopilot but there are moments where you get to the edge of one season connecting to the other season at that point there is a demand of deeper concentration and discernment you can excel in a season and fail to transit mastery in the spirit is demonstrated when you are transiting seasons that's when you will really know if you are spiritual hallelujah as a man of God you can have 10 years of excellent ministry but when seasons change because you lack the discernment you can remain at Brook Cherith even when the water has dried let me show you that scripture divine direction second Kings chapter 17 I'm not going to read the whole story but just 1 to 16 is the whole reference write it for your knowledge you can go and read that at home so the Bible tells us that there was about to be a famine and the voice of God the word of the Lord came are we together let's try two and three the Bible says second Kings first Kings 17 my apologies first Kings not second first Kings 17 from verse 1 Elijah the Tishbite who was of the inhabitants of Gilead said unto Ahab the Lord you know 
there shall not be rain and so on and so forth verse 2 verse 2 the word of the Lord came unto him saying get thee thence and turn thee eastward and hide thyself by the brook cherry that is before Jordan verse 4 he says it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook say divine direction and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there the key word there they won't feed you everywhere they will feed you where I assigned you don't forget this word I have asked I have commanded the ravens but the ravens don't look for you everywhere they go where they were directed and wait for you if you can listen enough and come there partners have been directed to meet you there helpers have been directed to meet you there it is your responsibility to hear what that there is there can be a place there can be a strategy are we learning divine direction man of God God called you to do a great work but make sure you hear about the there secure the voice of God after prophesying to Ahab you would think he was immune by himself he stood there and had to hear God for himself okay God I'm a prophet where do I go now he said don't worry go to Brook Cherith I have commanded a raven keep that scripture you've tempted me already verse what now to feed you there verse 5 so he went and did according to the word of the Lord for he went and dwelt by Brook Cherith that is before Jordan verse 6 the Bible says and the ravens like God said brought him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening I wonder this kind of thing imagine ravens I don't care whether you call them prophetic ravens or physical ravens one thing is that ravens mysteriously brought this man bread and meat but watch this this guy was enjoying the thing every day verse 7 and it came to pass after another word is after a season I want to show you something now about divine direction it came to pass after 10 years of raven feeding your ministry 10 years of raven feeding your family the Bible says that the brook dried up hmm. the brook dried up the brook dried up because there had not been rain in the land verse 8 and the word of the Lord came unto him again just because you had God last year is not enough for your whole destiny you have to hear again and hear again and hear again the word of the Lord came to him saying verse 9 arise get thee to Zarephath which belongeth to Zidon and dwell there behold I have commanded he commanded ravens now he's commanded a widow by the time you reject that voice and say no I know what God told me you didn't lie but you would die there because the ministry of the raven has finished it's important to know when what God directed to you has finished his course just because God sent the man just because God sent the strategy does not mean it will work forever there were things God told me there were the way I did ministry five ten years things had to change according to the word of the Lord there are people who are dying right now at Brook Cherith and they will tell you I would die believing God they truly will die because they have not known that another voice has come hmm. are we together this is a lesson for someone maybe you're in ministry maybe you're in business the same God can say stop the same God can say go don't be loyal to stopping or going be loyal to his voice don't love stopping so much that you assume he will always say stop don't love going so much a good car has both accelerator and brakes and you don't match them when you want there are occasions are we together is God helping someone this is your miracle service already for a man of God you want to crash land right now because you are assuming the ways of the spirit go and flog it after this conference Lord I had you for five years but right now I sense in my spirit that I'm at a new season and I will not move until I secure your voice let me tell you the truth 
God does not always speak, but he speaks. You were created in his image and you are not always speaking. The idea that God is always speaking is not accurate. In the Bible, you will hear that the word of the Lord came. Jesus, as God incarnate, was silent sometimes. When they brought the woman with the issue of blood, he kept quiet for a while. He didn't talk immediately. There are times God keeps quiet. And you must learn to stay when he's silent till you hear his voice. Who is learning tonight? Don't die at Brook Cherries. It was God that said, open that supermarket. But he knows what is happening right now. And you begin to sense a desire to go and pray and fast for two or three days. But you say, I have so much customers. Don't wait until the day the shop dries up. And people now say, where is your God? And God will say, I've been trying to get your attention since January. I've seen a famine coming in the land. And when that famine comes, this strategy will no longer work. Let me tell you the truth. This is not a pastor's conference, but I want you to write this. The way ministry is done now is wrapping up. A new season on how ministry is done is opening up. And everybody who has been eating from Brook Cherith is your responsibility to go and say, Lord, what is the next step? Otherwise, you will build a monument in Brook Cherith and gather dead bodies there. And the dead body will be because God once said, stay there. together brook cherries so take the time to pray don't be too loyal to strategies don't be too loyal to what was said yesterday make sure you are hearing all the time Habakkuk said I will stand upon my watch I will set myself upon the tower and I will hear what he will say to me take the time father in the name of jesus i'm trusting you for the education of my children should i send them to canada should i send them to europe or should they school in nigeria oh no 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 i have brain wisdom is profitable to direct and as soon as you get sometimes satan gives visa yes sir did you hear what i said he gives what you stamp your way to death and you carry death death is not only in the port death can be your passport too you can carry death on your way and carry your child away from you see let me tell you this divine direction does not take the place of intelligence or common sense but you must be careful there is nobody who is old enough to master the dynamisms that make for success on earth are we together now the pathways are too complicated and they change you need the ancient spirit to speak to you part time i don't assume my life with god it is costly and the higher you go you have to realize that there are many people connected to your rising you must stay and ask questions sometimes it's not for yourself you are saying okay god from this altitude now if i fall i will not die alone i will kill others who are behind who is learning tonight pay the price to secure the voice of God Elijah he once spoke to you and said go to Brook Cherries he told you not to do anything when you started ministry he said don't get any job don't do any business I am your exceeding great reward all the destiny helpers that is put around you because they obeyed him God promoted them and they've all left the country and because they've left the brook is drying you need to go back and say lord what is the strategy for the next level when god told you not to do anything it was because there was no demand no tv ministry no international ministry now that there are all kinds of demands you need to go back and say lord when i started i did not need one million per year it was simply a fellowship with three people i could afford some things please reveal to me the strategy for the next level if not satan will come with his own strategy and because of desperation like i taught you yesterday you will assume it is the voice of god i pray for you where satan has appeared as an angel of light listen i hope you know it was light that led the magi to jesus so satan can appear as a false light and direct you out of the place of purpose and keep you somewhere 
let me tell you this don't be loyal to activities don't make it a ritual have the flexibility and the unashamedness to stop when he says stop to go when he says go and let me speak to servants of god with all sincerity it's important for us to not be used to rituals activities are good it's good to plan but there are times you must be flexible to say lord what are you saying now thank you for what you said yesterday what are you saying now once your heart is malleable to be led of god he will truly come and lead you but once he finds out that you are too scientific and calculated it will take such labor to adjust you a bit you will find it difficult to make progress in life who is learning tonight lay your hands on your head in one minute and say father direct me let me not step into the next season of my life on my own direct me show me a strategy that brings restoration i'm standing in front of dry bones even though i am a prophet i do not want to assume that i should just prophesy i only prophesy as i was commanded he tells you what to say he tells you how to say it and dry bones can become an exceeding great army someone pray this is not a season of carelessness you are in a kairos moment in life in destiny in ministry go ahead and pray call on to me and i will answer i will show you great and mighty things the force of divine direction in jesus name we pray isaiah chapter 30 and verse 21 says and thy ear shall hear a voice from behind you are we together your ear will hear a voice from behind you saying this is the way walk ye in it this is the way someone say lord show me the way shout it as a prayer say, lord show me the way there are businesses that if you are still doing till now you will lose and you will fail no matter how righteous you are the reason is because there's no demand for them again the world has evolved and sometimes by the time you are realizing it it's already too late it's only God who sees the future God can tell you stop now and it may not make sense the foolishness of his wisdom are we together I don't want to begin to share with you stories of restraints permissions things that God said to do that did not make sense at the point of obedience but his wisdom later unfolded you sang a very powerful song in the morning while I was coming in the wisdom before time began you see that now very very powerful because it is in his light that we see light the moment you think you are intelligent enough to run your life by your own wisdom be ready for pain and be ready for recycling of losses in your life as for me I gave up on my intelligence long ago not that I do not acknowledge it it comes from him but I've made up my mind that this destiny and this assignment God has given me back there are many parts of that equation that school did not teach you there are many parts of that equation that parental training no matter how thorough will not show you there are virgin dimensions that you see the moves of God are twofold there is what we call the cyclical move of God as it has been before at that point mentorship age experience plays a role are we together when Samuel had the voice of God that was not the first person God was calling Eli used experience and said, I know it is God but there are certain pathways where no one has ever followed at that point no amount of experience can guide you you will need to step on that water no one ever stepped and walked on water in that sort Peter had to hear his voice and take that step today if God tells me to walk on water I have Peter to refer to but Peter had no one to refer to I'm praying for you again the kind of direction you need the exact instruction the exact place and the exact strategy that will bring you restoration I pray for you may you hear it tonight let me speak over someone here you will go to bed in the night and in the name of Jesus my God will unfold the blueprint of the next 10 years 
the next 10 years of your destiny the next 10 years of ministry in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah I have seen visions on how ministry will be in the next few years and I've been shocked at the kind of changes that are coming and that which the body of Christ is not seeing many there will literally be a shift in ways that we have not seen I'm praying for us that we obtain grace to be directed by God are we learning number three the third force that controls restoration is the force of obedience when God spoke to Elijah he had a right to obey and he had a right to disobey in John chapter 2 the Bible talks about the wedding a feast that happened in Cana of Galilee and the Bible says the wine had finished are we together now when the wine finished the people did not know what to do about it I'm not sure they had the ability to go and get wine prepare it and serve the people the occasion was already ongoing and some of the dignitaries had not received wine they were being embarrassed and Mary brought them to Jesus and when Jesus came she told them something she said whatsoever he says to do that you do it that you do it the power is in the doing not just hearing when God speaks move I like what he says about Abraham he told Abraham take now thy son thy only son whom thou lovest and offer him at a burnt offering hear what the Bible says Abraham rose up early in the morning timing matters when it has to do with obedience delayed obedience is disobedience because there is timing when God says wake up in the morning and you move in the night the person at the other end of your obedience may be weary and will leave even if you obey too late you may not get the answer are we together now if God says get up and intercede for someone quickly and you intercede one year later only to find out the person died one year before your intercession is powerful but with respect to that solution it is not profitable I'm praying for you the grace for prompt delight some obedience may God release it on someone whether it's an instruction to give whether it's an instruction to pray whether it's an instruction to submit your CV whether it's an instruction to show honor to your superior every time God speaks move do not move when you have not had the voice do not move when a rima word has not come from the word but when you hear God move there is timing Moses why are you still crying to me here is the word tell the people that they go forward Moses said that's it people I just came with a word from God. I found a solution about this Red Sea business. Are you ready? I stretch forth my rod, go forward. You know, Bible history would tell us that the water did not part immediately. It sounds like everything just parted, the ground came up, and they started dancing. <clears throat> Bible history would tell us that there were people who actually started stepping into the water as an act of faith before it parted. Two miracles happened there. Number one, the water parted hither and thither and made walls. Number two, the ground had to elevate to their level because if the, if the river parted, there would be a lot of space. Will you jump inside the hole that would have been created? The ground had to elevate itself to their level for them to walk on dry ground. I'm praying for you. In the name of Jesus, at the point of obedience, may you see miracles in your life. Even the miracle of restoration. For some of you, you came here not by invitation. You came here by divine direction. It was God himself that said you should come for this conference. It was not a poster that invited you. I'm telling you, since you have obeyed, the miracle connected to your obedience, may it follow you like a shadow. In the name of Jesus Christ. Divine direction. Who is learning? And then obedience. It's important to obey God. The spirit of rebellion often manifests as disobedience. You are not interested in what God is saying or you hear what God is saying and deliberately fight it. You know that's one spirit we need to trust God to get out of this nation. We like knowing what to be done. Then something makes us to disobey. At the point instructions come, there is a spirit that always works in people until they disobey. Are we together? 
someone can be resting quietly but tell the person don't move that's when he feels like moving it's a spirit there are times if you don't give rules someone will stand on the queue quietly because there are no rules but the moment you announce and say stand on the queue something makes him he must disobey to be happy if that spirit followed you here let me help you in the name of Jesus Christ I'm praying and I'm serious about the prayer I'm praying let that spirit live your life forever let me tell you something I've learned as a leader as a man of God order sponsors multiplication disorderliness always creates depletion of anything once there is disorderliness in your life sooner or later you will experience depletion financially and otherwise if you're learning say amen. amen let me give you number four quickly what is the fourth force that controls restoration if you are learning say amen, amen. it's called the anointing Isaiah chapter 32 and verse 15 the anointing the fourth force that is red is is responsible for restoration let's shout it together as we see it projected ready one to read uh-huh and the wilderness be a fruitful field and a fruitful field be counted look at the progression it started as a wilderness then it became a fruitful field then it became a forest does that look like your life that it doesn't matter how barren doesn't matter how void of color and beauty it is you can engage the anointing and the Bible says the Holy Spirit can pour the anointing like rain and it comes upon a desert land are we together now when you read Genesis chapter 2 the Bible says that God had not caused dew there was no plant upon it God had not caused dew rain to rest because there was no man to tend and to keep the garden hallelujah when it was time for crops to come out the Bible says that dew rested upon the land for someone the anointing is resting upon you tonight like the dew of Hammon it will rest upon your head and every desert will be counted for a fruitful field and then the fruitful field will be counted for a forest you believe that say amen, amen. by the mercies of God I've seen what the anointing can do in the life of a man show me a life that is void of color void of glory void of results and exploits let that man be correctly positioned to receive the grace of God to encounter the genuine power of the Holy Spirit it doesn't matter whether you are in business or ministry you see business that happens intellectually produces the results of men but when the grace of God comes upon that business when it is the Lord's doing it must be marvelous in our eyes the Lord's doing is beyond causing you to be happy there must be a marvel they looked at the man and said we have not seen it in this fashion the anointing can come upon you dear worshipers and you'll be surprised I sat back as you were worshiping I mean I just said these guys have the anointing of the spirit great voices skilled people I think we should celebrate them <laughs> hallelujah let me challenge you to continually contend for the anointing when the anointing comes upon a good voice then you will see the wonder of being an aligned vessel there are many of you who are business people you are so intelligent if without the help of the Holy Spirit just with brain work see the result you've had what if the anointing comes upon it you won't do business in Nigeria again you will be transacting with kings are we together now you need the anointing you need the anointing we used to sing a song let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me I don't know what kind of ministry I would have done today without the anointing you need the anointing whether you're a man of God or you're a businessman you need the anointing what is the anointing the engracing that comes from God and causes you to produce results at God's dimension when the anointing comes upon you doing things naturally doing things ordinary ceases completely 
truly it does we went to visit very briefly just to check the updates at the revival tent and I went there and I saw the phenomenal work that God is doing and I said no this woman truly carries the anointing there are things when you see you will see the end of a person's limitation and you can see where the anointing continues you know many times when people see me they say ah this is you I said this is me oh. all of me I have been hearing the teachings I have been hearing the miracles and this is me but that thing you are hearing is not only me we are many there are angels participating the Holy Spirit is there are we together you will be unwise to see what God is doing through my life and believe that I am doing it alone Nicodemus came to Jesus by night and said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. He said, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. God be with him. Somewhere in this service, before we wrap up, there's going to be a release of grace. If you are not interested, allow your neighbor such that when that impartation comes don't waste your neighbor's time because of your own carelessness if you are not interested save journey the day you need it you will come for soa conference maybe 2028 when you finally realize the need for the anointing but your neighbor is desperately that your neighbor has come to a point where he or she has realized academics without the anointing well you can have a good certificate and stroll with that certificate for the rest of your life without help a proposal can be intelligent presented they introduced a number of government officials here let me tell you a secret no matter what you do pray that the anointing of the spirit will rest upon it and you will watch the wonder working power they looked at Daniel and said no this guy is intelligent as a eunuch but there is an excellent spirit on this man there is do you know that an excellent spirit is discernible the king said the spirit of the gods. I don't know which God, but I know you are not alone. I'm praying for you. Your results today will show you are not alone. Ah, uh, somebody did not receive. Your results will be so extraordinary in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That someone will have to call you. Let me tell you a very humorous story. Many years ago, I used to have a... a neighbor then who I, I hear he used to be a native doctor you know he, he, I think he inherited it he helps people with all kinds of things I'm not sure he considers himself a bad man he was just giving something if you're in trouble he can come and help you know what I'm saying so one day he would always see people come around my place and then he came one night and called me we sat down just like Jesus and Nicodemus and he said sorry yo this thing eh, he doesn't know if there's a way I can help him honestly true story if i'm joking i'll tell you i'm joking i watch with shock and wonder i said so this man actually believes i'm using something well he's right but not you know what i'm saying so he wanted us to share after all in his mind he felt we're helping people i told him i said sir this power you see is a product of relationship you don't need a relationship with a herbalist you don't even need to know his name just obey the instructions drop your goat walk away and hope that the man knows what he's doing but when you come to Jesus Christ he does not give you power he gives you himself it is as you walk with him that eventually like a woman taking in seed the first day a woman takes in seed that's not the first day the stomach protrudes sometimes for weeks even her herself will not know she's pregnant have you seen that kind of thing but whether she knows it or not it doesn't stop the baby from doing what he's doing eventually she begins to feel that ah something is i'm changing why do i feel like eating yam by 2 a.m are we together what is this sudden change in my appetite and then she goes to the hospital and the doctor says congratulations you are carrying triplets this is the reason why Ah, who received it oh who received it you are carrying triplets listen whether you are married or not the prophecy can wait for you you don't believe it how many of you followed our service on Sunday 
and saw a woman he that came with triplets one two three God is still moving you are the only one who doesn't know and that's because you've left you've left the things of God and you are trying to make life work by yourself the anointing is an equalizer it doesn't matter how bad your background is let the power of God land upon your life land upon your ministry and turn you into a sign and a wonder who is receiving this as a prophetic word say father shout it say father let your fire fall upon my life say father let your anointing at a higher level fall upon my life turn it into prayer in one minute father let that anointing let grace from heaven i'm tired of doing ministry tired of doing life my way by my strength tired of doing business just by human connection i cry for grace fire from heaven rest upon my life rest upon my life rest upon my life please be seated please be seated the anointing is powerful my God I have seen firsthand what the power of God can do man of God if you are a ministry and there are no results of signs and wonders don't waste your time there is a dimension of power responsible for that outcome listen the anointing is dimensional you can have the anointing to prosper it won't heal the sick no sir are we together in Acts chapter 2 they were filled with the Holy Ghost in Acts chapter 4 they were filled with the Holy Ghost again the Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power he went about doing good healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him Acts chapter 4 and verse 33 with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and great grace was upon them all great grace great grace great grace when I pray I really don't pray so much about the anointing to be very honest but there are times I cry to God Lord you have helped me but let a thousand cubits be measured again again because yesterday's oil cannot confront today's giants you need fresh oil it says my head my horn has thou exalted like the horn of a unicorn and I am anointed with fresh Breathe, Lord, breathe. Breathe, Lord, breathe. Breathe upon my life. Breathe, Lord, breathe. Breathe, Lord, breathe. Breathe upon my life. I receive and manifest your power. And your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, exalted. I receive and manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus. Lift it up, glorify. So bring Lord, bring, bring Lord, bring. Let that be your prayer tonight. Bring Lord, bring, bring Lord, bring. When it's time for the impartation i'd like you to cry from your heart lord i can't come for this conference and stay at the same level the door i came in through i should not go out through that same door take me through another door one that i have not followed before let the anointing come on an ordinary man of god 
and watch what happens to your life let the anointing come upon an intercessor and watch what you become let the anointing come upon a mother raising children and watch what happens let the anointing come on a daniel let the anointing come on a gideon a joseph and watch what happens to you hallelujah the anointing of the spirit is the principal sponsor of favor it says because of the ointment so do the virgins love you it's not just talking about women people you do not know people you've never met the anointing is able to draw to your life people and resources mysteriously because of the ointment receive manifest his power and his wisdom receive manifest his power let me try it one more time on you receive manifest his power please be seated I have to give you the last one and then we'll pray so number one the force of prayer a cry of mercy and help from God number two the force of divine direction paying the price to secure the voice of God per time per season number three the force of obedience having the readiness to judge every disobedience when your obedience is complete number four the anointing the mysterious dimension of God's engracing that distinguishes a man number five the fifth and the final key that commands restoration is called the prophetic I want you to listen very carefully the prophetic my goodness Salim Arantoskiata Isaiah 42 and verse 22 where you got the theme for the conference these are a people robbed give it to us please 42 22 they are robbed and they are spoiled the Bible says they are taken into prison they are taken for a prey and non deliverance they are taken as spoils of war and there is no one to say restore restore what gives the prophetic the audacity to midwife your liberty it is because according to Hosea chapter 12 and verse 13 the Bible says and by a prophet Hosea chapter 12 and verse 13 and by a prophet the Lord God brought who brought but the vessel that was used was a prophet the same way the bones became an exceeding great army it was God but through the voice of the prophet and by a prophet the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt and by a prophet they were preserved in Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 9 the discourse starts from verse 5 young Jeremiah who had an ordination to be a prophet over territories he was having a discussion with the Lord and by the time we get to verse 9 9 for the sake of time the Bible says then the Lord said unto the Lord put forth his hand and touched my and touched my mouth and the Lord said behold I have put my words whose words the utterances that come from a genuine prophet of God are not his words the reason why it works is because the Lord put the words in his mouth he is the word but you are the voice John said I am the voice they say who are you give us a definition a description in John chapter 1, 6 and 7, the Bible says there was a man who was sent from God. His name was John. 7 says, the same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that men through his witness might believe. Now they are asking John, John, who are you? And he says, I am the voice of one that crieth. I am not the word, but I am the voice. I give sound, I give 
I give visibility. The prophet said, I prophesied as I was commanded. Do you know the Holy Ghost told him what to say? And the bones had what the Holy Ghost was saying, but they did not move until a man upon the earth repeated what the Holy Ghost said. The formula has always been the spirit and the bride. The spirit and the bride. When the spirit says, I want to lift someone in Enugu, nobody will rise until a bride comes and hears what the spirit is saying and repeats in faith that God wants to lift someone. You are going to be hearing words tonight and I hope that you will discern that they are not words of a man. Are we together now? I have put my words in your mouth. I think it's Isaiah 44. Isaiah 44 and verse 16. Give it to us. I, I hope. I hope I'm. Yes, Isaiah 44. And verse 16, not 17. Isaiah, did I get 26? Let's try 26. I'm looking for a scripture. He confirmed the words of his messengers. I think it's 26. Is that? Please try it. 26. Media, look at look for it for us. 44, 26. Isaiah 44, 26. Thank you. That confirmed the words of his messengers and performed the counsel, I mean the words of his servants and performed the counsel of his messengers. Let me tell you why prophetic words come to pass. It's not because the man of God is powerful by himself. Number one, it is because the words that he's uttering are the words of God. We are prophesying as commanded. Are we together? Everything you hear us say is something the Spirit of God has already said. Your assignment as the bride is to repeat as you heard. I prophesied as I was commanded and there was a sound. The Bible says bone began to be joined to his bone. And then he says speak again. Prophesy upon the four winds and says oh wind breathe upon this lane. And the wind came and there arose an exceeding great army. I am a beneficiary of the prophetic. I know what the prophetic can do. You've heard my story. I will say it for as long as God grants me the grace to come here. I, we can do a night vigil just giving you testimonies of what the prophetic has done in my life. The prophetic. The prophetic. The prophetic. That someone looks at you and says you are blessed. If the person is talking on his own, don't waste your time just be on your way going but if that person is speaking as an oracle of God and he says you are blessed the spirit of wisdom proceeds and begins to orchestrate the man who must act out that prophecy this is how the prophetic works so if I declare over your life and say may God open doors your own is to receive the amen is not just lifting your hands and shouting you are agreeing with the spirit I have heard what your servant has said and I believe that that word came from you if I shout restore and you say amen what you are saying is Lord this is the word for me in this season and I open up my heart if you are too big to say amen you will never see prophecy come to pass saying amen is not about shouting a-m-e-n amen is really from the heart you can shout amen and in unbelief you did not receive hallelujah praise the name of the lord when our daddy returned as he welcomed me in the office i said the, a small boy like this should not make a father in his 80s get into 90s to come and wait for me at the airport and I held his hands as we were going and in my heart I was saying no God this man at this age and at this point he's still doing this I'm old I held my small hand and said death you are far from me the name of Jesus Christ far from me far from me when a man who God has shown mercy in the area of finances with integrity if he looks at you as touching the oracles of God and says as God showed me mercy may he show you shout amen no don't say don't say I have a shop that's a that's that's not spiritual intelligence are we together such as I have he says give I unto you if God has helped a man in ministry is because there is a grace behind it are we together by the time he says in the name of Jesus may God help you shout amen are we together now 
things you want to be healed and a prophetic word comes don't look at that case the reason why healing is difficult for many people is because they really don't believe they will be healed or they do not believe the vessel speaking has that grace to make it work usually after one two people get healed you see all you say ah i'm still here sometimes after service they will still wait and say sorry you know the way this thing works i don't know and yet the man was shouting from start of the service till the end the prophetic you will be hearing prophetic words right now god has put his word while I was just taking a little rest and thinking of what I'll be saying, my sincere prayer, and I whispered this to the Lord, I said, Father, please, let no prophetic word that comes over these people's life return back. Except it would have been accomplished. Most people don't know the power of the prophetic. No, it is powerful. By the time you are done with service, you carry your bag, your Bible, and believe that you are going back home with all you came with. No, there is more. As you carry your bags and your Bible, you're on your way. How is church? Fine. You do not know that you are carrying mysteries on your head. You are carrying graces on your head. You are carrying a prophetic word. On your way home, someone looks at you and says, I don't know, but something tells me to help you. Tell the person, thank you. I expected it not after the amen I shouted for two hours grace came upon my life do you believe that something came upon Saul that was not upon him before and he said when two men saw him they gave him bread they greeted him there were things that were not possible in my life before but when the prophetic came in its various dimensions the prophetic came and sorted many aspects of my life sorted many aspects of my life i don't want to tell you stories that i've told you before but for the sake of those who are, that were not here when i said those stories i am forever i wish i had a chance to see in real life the women whether they are angels or, or physical people or the grandmothers that god used to speak a prophetic word over me was on my way to go and buy sugar cane and I met some women and I paid for them the law of honor remember I just decided to honor them one of the mothers was trying to lose her as um, uh, you know rapper and bring out money there and I said no these are mothers let me help it was not more than 100 naira and the women started blessing me and one of them looked at me and said my son forever walk upon gold walk upon gold i am a product of prophecy i've told you my story in a kitty right where one mama that her husband died at 136 years old and she was still alive i said please i believe that you carry the grace for long life if you live 136 years in nigeria you really know god are we together you are really strong and you are doing exploits and we cried that the woman would please pray and the woman called us showed us the photos of her and her husband she was the wife of his youth and we said please release that grace on us the woman said kneel down she took off her shoes and placed her feet on the ground and began to pray you know when a woman calls upon God Men, when you call upon God, you answer. I'm not saying it doesn't answer, but there's something about a woman crying from the bowels of her spirit. There are wailing women. There are no wailing men. There are men that intercede, but there are women that wail. When they cry to God, God answers. Let me tell you, if you have a prayer team praying for you and women are not part of it, Kai, pray that God will add women. Women have something between them and God. When they cry to God, when a woman reports you to God, even if you don't know what she's talking about, start saying mercy, mercy, <laughs> mercy, Lord, mercy. Let mercy go before the report reaches the throne. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. But who is ready for the prophetic tonight?
destinies can change at the instance of the prophetic ministries can be born at the instance of the prophetic that someone can come as Saul and those of you at the overflow I know there are so many people don't be distracted you have paid the price to this point I'd like you to receive something that works in your life rise up on your feet 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 oh oh the first intercessor for your destiny right now you're not praying for your neighbor you're not even praying for your spouse in the next two minutes I, I take any position you want but I want you to cry to the God of heaven Lord visit me change my story give me a testimony I've mentioned all of these forces some are at work in your life currently some are not and there can be levels of these forces working in your life open your mouth and pray in one minute Restore, 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 restore in the name of Jesus. Restore, plant upon me, plant within me the spirit of prayer and supplication that leads to restoration. Oh, let me hear your voice again. Let me hear your voice again. Let me hear your voice again. Speak, my destiny is at the mercy of your voice. Grace to obey. Grace to obey. Grace to obey. Shabbatai la kaparan josko to brega kebe la keba. Raja la parosko to brega kebe la roskia ta. Shala granja ke prati ke paratuskia ta. Fresh oil, O God, upon my life, upon my destiny. Speak. Let your word come with power tonight. One more minute. You are praying. For everyone that asketh, receive it. To him that seeketh, he will find. And to him that knocks, the door shall be opened. Your ministry cannot remain the same after this encounter. Your destiny cannot remain the same after this encounter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you are trusting God here for a healing in any part of your body, I'd like you to place your hand. I will pray for the sick now. Then I'm going to begin to prophesy. The major thing that I want to do tonight is prophetic declarations and impartation. This is really what you need. Hallelujah. If you are sick and you don't get healed supernaturally, you can get healed medically. But you can't receive prophecy medically. Are we together now? If it does not come by God and by grace, you remain grounded until the day the word of the Lord comes to you place your hand I want to pray for you this is by no means despising the power of God to heal I believe in the healing grace one of our precious ladies in the morning here it was so touching suffering from high near and having most or all of our family members having it again there are people who have come here you love Jesus but he said I will restore health and cure I will restore 
I've taught you here that sickness is actually a measure of death at work in your body. I hope you know death is in measures. There is a measure of death that when it overwhelms you, you will have to leave. But if it has not gotten to that measure, you can manage certain things. I hope you know. An organ in your body can die and you are still alive. That's because a measure of death, it, for instance, cancer, they can say you have stage two, stage three, and you are still alive. But there is a stage it gets to. It's just a medical name. Death, like the spirit of God, is in measures. And every time sickness comes, I am telling you, the goal is not to just make you incapacitated. The goal is to keep growing like a river till it overwhelms your body. This is one of the reasons why we pray for the sick. I have been a beneficiary of the healing power of Jesus. Else this man you see, you would not even hear of any Joshua Selman. I would have died since. I know what it means to experience the miracle working power of Jesus. It's the reason why as I minister his healing power to people across the nations, I do it with passion because I know what it means. Lay your hands. I want to pray for you in one minute. Thank you for your sacrifice of your time. It will be a worthy bargain by the time this meeting is ended. Whether it's an eye problem, neck problem, a growth, bleeding, you are having liver problem. One of the demonic things I see growing among people right now is kidney failure. Kidney failure. I don't know if it happens around the east here, but I have prayed for so many people in recent time. Kidney failure. Although doctors tell us that many people don't drink water. So the, the caution is drink after this service, go home and drink water, whether you are thirsty or not. But there are people who, even if they drink one, one drum of water, these spirits are determined to pack up their organs. The Bible says he keepeth his bones and none is missing. He keepeth his bones kidney failure, liver problems, cancer. You find one side of your breast just swelling and you think it's just some women thing. They go and, you know, by a procedure, remove all of that and the next thing they tell you that is benign, you're having cancer. What of men? Prostate. Now young people, you see a young person with hypertension, 18 years with high blood pressure. What is he doing with high blood pressure? What is he thinking about? It's satanic. I know a lady that would eat and vomit everything. I'm not talking like regurgitating like a goat. Everything that my father has not planted within your body. I'm stretching my hands only to a believer in the name that is above all names. I decree and declare the spirits that are back of any infirmity by the power that raised Christ from the dead, from the tents, the overflows outside, the balcony, those who are here, and those who are following you online in the name of Jesus I command those spirits to leave your body now I command those influences to leave your body now leave your body now leave your body now leave your body now, your body now. I decree and declare Enugu be healed now blood conditions be healed now eye conditions be healed now anyone with a pain and if you are standing for someone I'm seeing some of you lifting pictures of your loved ones I want you to release your faith in the name of Jesus Christ hear me anyone having organ failure organ failure heart attack is killing people both young and old People go to bed and they don't wake up. Are we together? Yeah. Any cardiovascular disease here, in the name of Jesus, whether it's heart palpitations, a hole in your heart, you are not able to breathe well, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, be healed now. Be healed now. Severe pains. There's someone you have severe pains like joint pains. You know how it happens for a sickler, an SS patient where you have excruciating pain like a crisis. You are not a sickler but you have this recurrent pain. I'm praying for you. In the name of Jesus, what he says to one, he says to all. Anyone having pain around any part of your body, that pain disappears now. 
anyone with a hearing problem I decree and declare may your ears be open now any bone problem you came here you're on a wheelchair or on a stretcher on a crutch you are not able to walk in the name of Jesus Christ I release the healing power of Jesus over you now and I decree and declare find strength to your limbs even though I'm praying for the sick anyone here called barren you've not been able to celebrate children I pray in the name of Jesus the Bible says by faith Sarah received strength the kind of strength required to make for conception and delivery let it rest upon you now let it rest upon you now anyone here with an issue of blood in the name of Jesus we declare that the fountains dry this moment lumbar spondylosis and all kinds of pain neurological problems I stretch my hands the Lord is healing someone in the name of Jesus whether for you or for your loved one I decree and declare be healed now be healed now in the name of Jesus the Lord is showing me a vision of two men here this is a challenge you have as in the manner of men I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus this thing has affected your home it has affected your marriage you are in this place right now you've gone to the hospital I pray for you by the power that raised Christ from the dead may the Lord bring healing to your body now may the Lord bring healing to your body now may the Lord bring healing to your body now any growth in your body lumps around your breast fibroids and all, con all kinds of satanic growth may they melt and pass out of your body now don't be tired of saying amen I pray for you whether I mention your case or not by the power that raised Christ from the dead be healed this moment be healed this moment be healed this moment in the name of Jesus now hear this I want you in the next one minute mention to God the specific area where you need restoration and an answer I'm about to prophesy over your life but so that prophecy is not careless there is intelligence in receiving prophecy the Bible says be anxious for nothing Philippians 4 and verse 6 it says but in everything are we together now yes be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving he says let your request be made known so lift your voice in one minute mention the specific area some of you you are not sick what you need is a grace a grace you have seen a grace you desire don't be quiet please open your mouth in one minute maximize your stay tonight go ahead and pray take a minute You're about to receive a very mighty prophetic word. What area? Maybe your finances. Alas, master, it was borrowed. The axe head has fallen. Oh, a prophetic word is about to come. Take a minute to pray. Make your request known. Lord, I'm trusting you to give me rest roundabout. Sort my life in this area. Don't be silent. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, I'm standing here in partnership with the grace of God upon our father and our mother the grace of God upon the angel in this house and under the corporate anointing all the graces here captured every prophetic word you are about to receive I like you to receive it and shout a thunderous amen amen believing amen believing he says I am the amen the beginning and the last 
and whilst you are praying I sense that from heaven ah, like the dew of Hammon that that these answers will come as mantles and graces it will rest upon you and you will walk out of this place a new man are you ready to receive now in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you by the power of the Holy Spirit what your father suffered what your mother suffered what those who went behind you suffered that is now trailing and haunting your life by the blood of the eternal covenant let that captivity come to an end now let it 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 come to an end now Because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore God, even thy God has anointed you with an oil of gladness that exalts you above your fellows. I pray for you. I place an unction on your head tonight. I decree may that grace distinguish you. Cease to be ordinary from tonight. May that grace distinguish you. May that grace distinguish you. May that grace distinguish you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It says, Thou shalt increase my greatness and comfort me round about. I pray for you. The cause of stuntedness, the cause of smallness, is said, I will, I will multiply them, they will not be few. I will glorify them, they will not be small. I decree and declare, step into the next season of your prophetic destiny. Step into the season, the next level of your prophetic destiny, the next level of greatness, the next level of glory, the next level of power, the next level of wisdom, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The Bible says the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. Do you know why they plant palm trees around oceans? Because even when other trees break, a palm tree can literally bend 180 degrees. The leaves touching the ground and it will spring back and stand straight. The Bible says the righteous, they will flourish like a palm tree. Not like any other tree. They can bend left and right, but they don't break. They come back to that center of gravity. I pray for you. In the name of Jesus, anything that wants to shift you left and right, to take away stability from your life like jesus i pray for you you are stable with consistent results consistent results consistent results consistent victory in the name of jesus hallelujah i shared the scripture in the morning i want to repeat it for you now numbers 1 and verse 5 these are the names of the men that shall stand with you for many of you your own becoming in life is that you have no man john chapter 5 the man at bethesda when jesus came to him and said will thou be made whole he said i have no man the absence of a man turned something that can be one minute old captivity and he will be free it turned into 38 years you are as favored as the men that stand with you the Bible says these are the names numbers 1 and verse 5 these are the names of the men that shall stand with you what betides a man in this end time who is alone the Bible says it is not good for man to be alone he's not just talking about a wife oh. if you are alone in life in destiny in ministry two are better than one and a threefold cord cannot be easily broken i pray for a man of god who has been alone struggling alone i pray for a businessman who has been alone void of helpers may help come speedily may help come speedily may help come speedily may help come speedily, help come speedily. Hallelujah. i don't know how many of you are interested in this prayer I've prayed it for my people. Let me try it in Enugu. Listen. Just because you are gifted does not mean you will be rewarded. 
you are only rewarded when your gift is served in the presence of those who have the ability to discern and reward what you carry joseph had capacity to interpret dreams he interpreted three people's dreams two of them left him in prison it was only when he interpreted the king's dream you can interpret dreams and still remain in prison because those whose dreams you are interpreting do not have capacity to take you out when god wants to help you he will make the king dream are we together i have learned in life and ministry servants of god that there is nothing more frustrating for a man of god as carrying genuine grace but being around people who do not have a recognition for what you carry you will be despised in the presence of people who have no recognition it's like selling baby food for me i love you but i won't buy it what will i do with baby food are we together now many of you here are gifted in enugu the truth is that those who need you have been praying for you they just don't know that you are the one they've been praying for there are some of you with the capacity you've worked on yourself by mercy academically you've worked on yourself intellectually spiritually character wise you are a brand desired by nations but those who need you do not yet know you are there the assignment of the prophetic is like a businessman to connect buyer and seller only that you are not doing this for profit are we together now you can be Saul, but the man who will give you bread is not in your capacity to know them it will take Samuel to help you know let me tell you this I was not always celebrated and received and honored I've not honestly had people antagonize and despise me I think I've had a unique acceptance within the body of Christ for which I am grateful but there are many men of God I know for a long time they carried grace but they were in the midst of people who did not despise them it's when they invite everybody and they are not coming they now come and say we don't know if you can help us so sorry about crashing on you now I'm not in so everybody has process and we grow but a time comes in your life when your sacrifice should produce a result that consoles you are we together now I've heard people speak to me intelligently by the time you hear them speaking and when they are done they have to go and stand outside trying to look for transport and I'm not insulting that nothing is wrong but sometimes you see certain capacities and you are saying no this this does not add up the worst stuff that I've seen is a PhD woman in Port Harcourt who was working in the security company because she was desperate. She needed to feed her children and there was no job. PhD, genuine PhD. Why am I telling you this? I want to prophesy a change of audience. Listen, some of you here have been wasting your energy on people who do not have the discernment to acknowledge what God has given you. I pray for you where you have been around people who don't have the capacity may my god change your audience may my god change your audience ministerially business wise may my god change your audience in the name of jesus christ i'm sure one day a gentleman just passed esther and said hadassah how are you not knowing that one day that young lady was going to be his queen there are some of you you are carrying the destiny of Hadassah but the right eyes have not seen you help those under the anointing the right eyes have not seen you and I don't just mean it in terms of marriage to be exalted even in the palace you are Hadassah but you have not met Mordecai and so you cannot even when they are calling other virgins you don't hear the announcement you remain there and they keep calling your position first has gone the space is empty hadassah where are you and she's nowhere to be found the bible says mordecai called and said try your luck who knows but when favor rested upon her the bible says the king saw her esther chapter 2 and verse 17 that you don't have to bring them out we're, we're, we're not really having that time again hallelujah praise the name of the lord i know what the favor of god can do i want to pray that favor for you because favor is the mystery behind ease god can through favor bring a man to a realm of rest roundabout i pray for you where you have struggled in life 
and struggled in business by the power that raised Christ from the dead the men who should find you the men who should hold your hands the men who should help you wherever they are in this city and this nation by prophecy I gravitate them to your life I gravitate them to your life I gravitate them to your life hallelujah we are wrapping up listen listen there was a man sir he was trusting God to help him and to change his story true story and he I think he was a lawyer or something of that sort and he didn't the senior advocate wanted to help him I, I hope I still remember the story and he didn't know how to help the young man so one day they were in a place where there were many senior people wealthy billionaires and this is all he did someone come this protocol or anyone let me use you come follow me everywhere I go so this is a young guy trusting God for open doors this is a very senior man in his industry and he said everywhere I go follow me he brought him out and he was acting as if they were discussing follow me not as a protocol as friends and he was talking with him how are you how is your wife and the man said what are you doing to me now you are wasting my time sir I'm trusting God and he turned around again he said so is everything fine all those millionaires were watching him the man that they desire was talking with someone as a colleague as soon as he took him to the office he now said that's it you can go the man felt angry as soon as he came out and was going a wealthy man stopped him and said sorry oh, we've been trying to reach that man since we cannot get him can we use you to do this contract name your price let me tell you this I only gave that example to tell you presence has power there are many ways doors open you can use a key you can use your iris but there are times that your presence can open a door have you seen doors to the airport as soon as you come it detects you there are others that are open for everybody there are others who will not open for every presence you have to be the owner of that office God can honor you with a grace that as you step into doors they open on their own but there are times God can use men the power of the leverage is that a man's credibility is capital credibility is a product of many years of integrity invested to win the loyalty of people within your business if that man endorses you don't be too proud though. some of you this is why you came listen carefully to what I'm telling you your business will not just grow because you are intelligent it matters who tell people hear ye him there are some of you who are ministers of the gospel it takes one genuine endorsement in righteousness hear ye him thank you Benny Hinn went to preach many years ago and he went to a community a nation that was largely Catholic it was at the time the prime of his ministry where he would gather 30,000, 50,000, 100,000 and he seemed to ignore the spiritual voices in that territory and he went there he was disappointed when he held that crusade there were empty seats and people did not come and he went back feeling pain and with a few counsel from other senior people they told him they said this is a largely catholic society and there are the priests there you didn't greet them you didn't acknowledge them you, you did not appreciate their influence over that land you just came as a powerful man of god and the empty chairs were testaments that there are laws that were not working in your life and eventually they sent gifts they went to greet the people and he went to meet the what they call the the head of the you know the, the catholic union there and greeted him and the man told him the diocese or so he greeted him and said well i heard about your meeting but you did not honor us you didn't recognize us and we decided we'll not interrupt your program do your thing there but now that you have come go and organize a program again i will tell the people in all of the expressions to honor your program they prepared and they went back for that meeting and it was a massive success let me tell you this it's not only god you need oh. in terms of sovereignty and sovereign power it is only him but the dynamics of results on earth if god says yes and a man says no the yes remains in the realm of the spirit until a man says no the angel had to come and speak with Mary. God wants to birth Jesus. Make your womb available. Are we together? 
if I tell you men have not played a role in my life, you'll be joking. There are people who can, with one call, I like this person, I love this person, please bless him, please increase him. Or a Robert, before he died one time, Ben Hill was in debt, in debt as a powerful evangelist. And they gave him three minutes of air time. And Ora Roberts just sat down and said, Benny is in trouble. Help him. That was it. They raised about $10 million. The power of presence. I don't know who must show up in your life. I don't know whose credibility you should leverage on in this season. But I cry to the God of my covenant. And I pray in the name of Jesus. May superior helpers endorse us. May they show up in your life. May they show up in your ministry. May they show up in your destiny. In the name of Jesus. May they show up in your life. May they show up in your ministry. May they show up in your destiny. I say it again. May they show up in your life. May they show up in your business. In the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. Where it has been shame for you and reproach, may my God give you double. Now standing upon the grace that is over this church, the grace is over this city. Let me speak to you now. Restore. 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 A restoration of your joy. A restoration of your peace. A restoration of opportunities. A restoration of relationships. A restoration of graces. In the name of Jesus. Whoever left your life that should not have left, may they return back. Whatever left your life that should not have left, may it return back. Every lost coin in your destiny, find it speedily. Every lost coin, find it speedily. In the name of Jesus. Wave your hands and give Jesus praise. Restore everything that was lost. Restore everything that was stolen. Restore everything that was lost. Restore. You will restore. Let me make an altar call. We're wrapping up. Lend me your attention. Please don't distract those to come out. The greatest restoration that any man can receive is a restoration of your relationship with Jesus. You can receive restoration of health, finances, but if Jesus is not the principal um, person that you are restored to, then you did not receive complete restoration. I want to make an altar call Let's minimize movement so that we allow those who need to answer this call to come. You are in this place. There's no need cajoling you. You know that you need Jesus. Your destiny depends on it. And perhaps you are here. You are saying, Apostle, I've made that decision. But as it stands now, I need to rededicate my life. Please give me the honor of leading you to this Jesus, not another one. Wherever you are, I'm going to count one to five. If you're outside, you're in here. I'd like you to step out quickly as I count one to five. At the fifth count, once this place is filled up, then you will stand right where you are. Those who are outside, you may need to use your LED screens. I'm not sure there will be spaces for you here. There won't be space for you. Um, all the overflows, you can use the LEDs. And then for those who are online, you can connect as I make this prayer. I'm sure that the media will feed you on what to do. Let's honor them as they come. One. Keep coming. God bless you. Two. Three. Is that the best you can do? Let's encourage them as they come. This is the greatest restoration that can happen here tonight. Four. Finally, five. God bless you. I want to thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Please keep coming quickly.
the Bible says as many who will come to him he will in no wise cast away I thank you for the courage to make this noble decision even at this conference let me request that you lift your right hand to Jesus as a sign of surrender and say these words after me loud and clear let him hear you mean it from the depth of your heart say Lord Jesus tonight I have heard your word I desire restoration of relationship of fellowship with you I believe that you are the son of the living God I believe that you died for my sin I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior my Lord and my King I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight I'm a child of God I go from glory to glory grace to grace in Jesus name keep your beautiful hands lifted father thank you for these precious ones they have come declaring your lordship over their lives I declare over your life that the grace to walk in victory let it be yours from today I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God and I declare you are empowered by his spirit to walk in victory you go from glory to glory grace to grace in Jesus mighty name we pray amen now two things very quickly number one you should have received a form I'm sure you are given a form right now um, please do well to fill that form as legible as you can and then you return it back to the ushers as they will demand their numbers that will also be given to you please make sure that you take advantage of that and there's also a little slip in your hand apart from the the form uh, with a telephone number on it just as it's on the screen just text new life to that number is that okay is that okay thank you very much on sunday after the combined service we're going to be having a special party for all of you so please try and be here on sunday morning in the name of jesus thank you so very much i pray that the remaining part of this conference will be most impactful in your life in the name of jesus christ that at the end of this conference by sunday you would not be the version that started this conference you will access all the graces required and the word restore will no longer be the theme of a conference but it will be your experience i declare the blessing of the lord upon you and that you go from glory to glory in jesus name i pray those in front you can return to your seat and may the lord bless you in jesus name